Hey Russell fam, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make an easy lasagna. Be back in just a second. Hi, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Becky. I am a homeschooling mom of two and I have been homeschooling since 2012. Here on this YouTube channel, I like to talk about homeschooling, homemaking, and everything in between. I love to share lots of my easy recipes that I know all of us busy moms, we like to just make them and have them. I meal prep, and this is perfect for meal prepping. So let's get started. For this lasagna recipe, we're gonna start off with making the sauce because that is part of what takes the longest. For the sauce, you are going to need one pound of ground beef. I'm using ground venison. You're going to need one pound of ground Italian sausage. You are going to need one large onion, chopped. You are going to need five cloves of garlic, chopped. You are going to need a half a cup of basil, fresh basil. You are going to need one fourth of a cup of fresh parsley for the sauce. And then you need to reserve two tablespoons of chopped parsley for um, later. And then you are going to need half a cup of chicken broth, which I have right here. You are going to need, oop, I opened up upside down. You are going to need two six ounces of tomato paste. You are going to need 15 ounces of tomato sauce. And you are going to need 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes. I'm using our homegrown tomatoes right here that we canned. So they're kind of like a crushed stewed tomatoes. We've made this recipe, I think four times and it works perfect. So for the seasonings, I have them here. You are going to need a teaspoon of fennel, one teaspoon of oregano. You are going to need half a teaspoon of salt, one fourth a teaspoon of pepper, and two tablespoons of sugar. And I am going to brown the meat and drain the fat, and I'll be back. Here is the meat. I have put it in my fistler, and I am going to push the saute button. And we are just going to brown all of this meat all together. The meat is brown. There's not much grease in it, but I'm going to go ahead and drain it anyway. I just like to do that because I don't like the grease if it's floating in it. I just don't like that. So let's drain it and then we'll get everything added together. The meat is browned and drained, so now we're going to add in our onions. And I'm going to just dump all of this in the fissler. There's our onions. Our garlic. Our fresh parsley. Our fresh basil. our 28 ounces of tomatoes, our half a cup of chicken broth, our tomato sauce, and now we are going to add in our two cans of six ounces of tomato paste. To me, it works better if I use a butter knife. I'm not sure how y'all get your tomato paste out, but it all seems to come out much easier with a butter knife. There's one, and this is two. All right, 
Then we're going to add in our spices. It's all of this right here. We're just going to dump all that goodness in there. And we're going to give it a quick stir. And this is just for the meat sauce portion. I'm going to show you how we do the noodles and the ricotta and all of that. But I wanted to get this started first because this is supposed to simmer for an hour. Um, I have done it on the stove and I have also done it in my Fistler multi-pot. And that's what we're using today. And because the Fistler, you cannot make it go down to um, an hour. What I usually do is I set it on slow cook. Um, with it sealed and let it cook for one hour and I watch it and uh, so that'll leave an hour left and I'll show you what I do. All right so that looks good and all mixed up. It smells so yummy. This is how this has become Bailey's favorite dish. So we're going to put our top on here going to make sure it's on seal and let me show you what I do all right so I'm going to come over here I'm going to click my slow cooker and you see it says four and it's blinking I'm going to hit the minus sign and that's going to take it down and see I can't go any lower than two hours so what I do is I just put it on two and watch it There we go, it is started. So when one hour is done, we'll be back. Now, while the sauce is in the Fistler, we're gonna work on our ricotta mixture. And what you need is you need 30 ounces of ricotta. Um, I couldn't find 30 ounces in my grocery store, so I just got two 15 ounces. And I've already taken the safety seal off of them. I'm just gonna put them in the bowl. And this is a real easy ricotta mixture. So here is our 30 ounces. Just gonna put it in here. And it helps if you let it sit out just a little bit. It works a little better. Okay, so we have our ricotta. And then you're going to need one lightly beaten egg. You are going to need one eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg not much just a little I'll sprinkle that in there all right and remember when i said that you needed to reserve your two tablespoons of um chopped basil uh, parsley chopped chopped parsley sorry and that's what this is right here we're going to mix it in with our ricotta and then I'm just going to mix it all together. And then I will just set this to the side so when the sauce is done, we can assemble our lasagna. And when I am down to 30 minutes left on the meat mixture, I'm going to come back and show you a easy hack, trick, whatever you want to call it, on how to make the lasagna noodles. So, because we're not going to boil them or any of that, and you can't put them in there in the oven raw. Um, so, I'm going to show you my lasagna noodle hack. I have taken a 12-ounce box of lasagna noodles, and you can hear them, they're crunchy. And what I have done is I have put them in this dish, and I have uh, tap water. But I've gotten it as hot as I can stand it, as hot as it will go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this over the lasagna noodles. And I'm going to let it sit here for 30 minutes. And it's going to soften up the noodles. So when I go to layer it in there and put it in the oven to bake, they will all be done at the exact same time. So you want to completely cover it and submerge it in water. And there is my lasagna noodle hack. The sauce has been going for an hour, so we are gonna get it out of the Fistler. We're gonna push the keep warm feature, which makes it zero, and you push it again. And when it looks like that, that is the keep warm. 
So let me get the camera switched around and we will look inside. Since we have been cooking under pressure, I am going to push the button right here in the middle of the Fissler. And I always use a paper towel because sometimes water will spurt out of here. So I'm just going to push it like this. All right, there is no pressure buildup. So we just move it over to release. And then we can take the top off. And there we go. There is an amazing smelling sauce. Look how yummy. So now we are going to move over here and start getting layered up. Here are the noodles that have been in the water. And if you look at them, they are good and flimsy but they're not like super limber, so they will go perfect. I'm going to drain this water and I'm going to get my nine by 13 casserole dish and I'm gonna put that on top of a baking, a cookie baking sheet, which makes it easier to get it in and out of the oven because sometimes it does spill over and I'd rather clean up the cookie sheet than the mess in the oven. So let me drain this and then we'll get started. Okay, for the lasagna, you know we've got the meat sauce, you know we've got the ricotta, and you know we've got the lasagna noodles, and you're also going to need mozzarella slices, and you're going to need parmesan, grated parmesan. This is freshly grated parmesan. I bought the big hard block and grated it myself because it tastes so much better. So let's get to layering. What we're gonna do is we're first going to start with our meat sauce in the base. And we're going to try to get three layers and sometimes I do have a little bit of meat sauce left over so I just kind of like to evenly spread it out on here and then once I put the noodles on top I kind of push them down in it so that helps spread it a little more evenly And what I do with the extra meat sauce when I have some is I just do it pretty much like spaghetti and add uh, Parmesan and some mozzarella on it and use some spaghetti noodles and it works just the same. So now we are going to take our noodles and I usually get three across. Like so. And then I take one and I tear it and I put it down here in the bottom. So now we have our meat sauce, we have our noodles, and we're going to use a third of our ricotta mixture. Remember we made that earlier? And so I just stick that kind of on here. I don't really measure it exactly, I just kind of eyeball it. it's easier to spread on top of the noodles instead of getting it all in the meat sauce so that is just another helpful hint when making this lasagna and I try to do thin thin layers but sometimes it gets a little thicker than I want so we're just going to spread it out and if you just push down with the bottom of your spoon, I found that helps too, once you've got it spread out. All right, so now we have our ricotta and now we are going to use our mozzarella slices. Um, you can use shredded mozzarella if you like. Um, I love the Sargento slices and they fit perfect. And you just put them like that. So I usually use about six slices here. And 
All right, so, and then I just kind of mash it a little bit to make sure everything's kind of leveled out. And then we are gonna go again with our um, meat sauce, and this time we're gonna add a cup of Parmesan. So I'm gonna show you this part, and then I'll show you the finished product so you don't have to sit here and watch me layer it all out again. But once you get to this part, then you put the Parmesan on top of it. All right, so there's our meat sauce. Here, oops, sorry, here is our shredded Parmesan. We're gonna take about a fourth of a cup. Like I said, I didn't measure it. I just kind of eyeballed it there. And then we're gonna repeat the whole process. So I'll be back to show you what it looks like when I'm done. This is what it looks like completely layered. And as you can see, it is all the way up to the edge of my nine by 13 cooking dish. Now, I can't remember if I told you that you needed to preheat your oven to 375, so I did that while I was layering all this, and I'm going to cover it with foil, and I'm going to bake it for 25 minutes with the foil on, and then I'm going to take the foil off and bake it for another 25 minutes, so that is a total of 50 minutes of baking, and when I take the foil off, I'm going to add my leftover mozzarella on top of it so it can brown in the oven. So I'll be back to show you what that looks like after this. It has been 25 minutes. I just pulled this out of the oven. We're gonna take off the foil and see what it looks like. That, oh, Parmesan's sticking. So that is what it looks like. Now I'm gonna add my mozzarella and then we are going to finish baking it for another 25 minutes. And I just kind of break up the mozzarella and put it around. We just like a real cheesy lasagna. If you don't like yours really cheesy, you don't have to add the Parmesan to the top or the mozzarella, but that's just how we like it. So I'm gonna finish doing this and then we're gonna put it in the oven. Just pulled this out of the oven for the last 25 minutes. You can see how it's bubbling right there. I always put a cookie sheet under it because you can see how it boiled over down here. But this smells amazing. And look how it puffed up over the sides. I'm gonna let it sit here and cool off for about 15 minutes before I cut it. And then we are gonna dig into some lasagna. Okay, it is sat for 15 minutes. We are going to cut into it. Probably need to let it sit a little bit longer, but Bailey is ready to dig into it. And you know, it's kind of like a pie or a cake. It's always that first piece is the hardest to get out. Look how yummy that is. Delicious, and it is still smoking, so it is still hot. Make sure to check out in the description box below. I will leave the recipe down there for you with all the instructions, and I hope you found this video to be helpful. Leave me a comment of some of your meal prepping meals that you like to use. As always, remember to be kind, be careful, be considerate, and have a great day. Bye.